Is level the same as horizontal? I'm going to say yes and no. Is this a contradiction? No, because it all depends on the context in which you are using these words. This is a graphic I've used in many of my videos to show the difference between the two models. Now up above, the horizontal and level line are one and the same. So of course, the horizontal elevation does not change with distance. But down below, the level line curves down from the horizontal, and the rate of change in the horizontal elevation is about 8 inches per mile squared. Now I'm going to change how we measure curvature drop from the example above where it's measured at each end to the example below where the curved level line is above the horizontal line and I'll be measuring the sagitta. To show how this works, up above we have a two mile curved level line with eight inches of curvature drop on each end and down below that curved level line is above the horizontal so the sagitta is now eight inches. I'm going to begin with, over short distances, level is the same as horizontal. Here are some curvature drop calculations based on 8 inches per mile squared with the metric equivalent below. And at 100 feet, the curvature drop is only 3 thousandths of an inch, and that is the same as the average human hair thickness. So for a 200 foot distance, the sagitta is also the thickness of a human hair. Now if we can't see or measure the curvature difference, are we really going to say the curved level line isn't horizontal? Now most do-it-yourselfers will never be involved with a project that is up to 200 feet in distance. And this also applies to home builders. In the example above, there's a 3,200 square foot house that has a footprint of 65 by 76 feet. So for most people who ever use a tool to level something, it will always be at a distance where you cannot see the difference between a level and horizontal line. But what about larger commercial construction projects? I worked in commercial construction and some of the projects I worked on used a technique called tilt-up construction as shown above. These were industrial parks that usually included three or more buildings and some of the warehouses were up to 1,500 feet in length. So how would curvature affect a building that is this long? So let's take a look at the curvature drop for 800 feet, which is almost 3 sixteenths of an inch. This means that if we had a 1600 foot long building with a perfectly curved level floor, well the center of that floor would only be 3 sixteenths of an inch higher than each end when compared to a horizontal line, and that is negligible for that distance. This would also be true for a 2,400 foot long building, which is almost a half mile, even though the sagitta is almost 7 sixteenths of an inch. So why do I say this is inconsequential? Now blueprints are drawn with perfectly straight lines and perfectly flat planes that are perfectly parallel and perpendicular to each other. But these are really idealized geometric concepts, and this does not exist in reality. This is from a pamphlet for the specification of concrete tolerances from the American Concrete Institute. No structure is exactly level, plumb, straight, and true. Tolerances are a mean to establish permissible variation in dimension and location. There are two tolerances for the surface of a floor. Flatness is how bumpy the surface is compared to perfectly flat surface, and levelness is how parallel the overall floor is compared to perfectly level. The traditional method of measuring this is with a 10-foot straight edge, and for a floor classification of flat, you are allowed up to a quarter inch gap. And I will remember being on a few jobs that required a floor to be flatter than this. Now the quarter inch gap tolerance for a flat floor classification is larger than the sagitta for a perfectly curved 1600 foot level floor. And this is why I called that 3 sixteenths of an inch negligible for that distance. Now even a 7 sixteenths inch sagitta for a 2400 foot long warehouse is not going to be a problem. 
If you look up above and we had wall panels that were 20 feet wide, that would be 120 panels along that wall. The panels are placed with a three quarter inch gap between them and this is filled with a sealant that acts as an expansion joint. Now remember, for a 200 foot distance, we have a sagitta that is the thickness of a human hair. So for this distance, you could say there is literally no curvature at all. Now, if you look above, we can look at that warehouse as being 12 200 foot segments that are built end to end. Each 200 foot segment really has no curvature to speak of, but yes, over that distance, that warehouse would be following the curvature of the earth. And the truth is there is really no limit to how long you could make this building. What about diverging verticals on a 2,400 foot long building? Well, the walls at each end would only diverge by about seven one thousandths of a degree. So how much longer would the roof be if we had a 60 foot high warehouse? Well, if the building was built perfectly plumbed, the roof would only be a little more than a 16th inch longer than the floor, which again is negligible. Here are tolerances for deviation from plumb for both concrete and structural steel, and in both cases they allow about 3 eighths of an inch for a 10 foot column. If you look down below to the right, I have a 2.16 inch calculation for deviation from plumb for a 60 foot concrete wall, but it is also stated that there is only a 1 inch maximum allowed. So what this means that it is possible that that roof could be either two inches longer or shorter than the dimensions on the print and still be within tolerance. Now getting back to horizontal and level, these are tolerances for structural steel. And in the box in the center, I have a calculation of about one half inch for deviation from level for a 20 foot steel beam but they only allow a maximum of 3 eighths of an inch. So you can see that it's possible that that 20 foot horizontal beam could be 3 eighths of an inch lower on one side, but we would still call it a horizontal orientation. Now let's compare that 3 eighths inch tolerance for a 20 foot steel beam to the sagitta that's only the thickness of a human hair for a curved level line that is 200 feet long. And I think most people understand why we ignore curvature on the vast majority of construction projects. So yes, even in construction, horizontal and level are considered to be the same thing, but we also know that there is nothing that is perfectly horizontal or level. Now this is even supported by dictionary definitions of level and horizontal. There are many different definitions of level depending on the context the word is used in and the first two are in reference to an instrument that is used for leveling. Now these definitions do refer to level as horizontal and approximately or practically horizontal, but 6a says a line or surface that cuts perpendicularly all plumb lines it beats and hence would everywhere coincide with a surface of still water without defining the shape of that surface. And above we have to make a line or surface horizontal and down below to find heights of different points in a piece of land. And here we have horizontal making a reference to level. Now these definitions make sense because for most people, including those that work on most construction job sites, are going to be experiencing level and horizontal at short distances where the difference is too small to see and measure, so they are assumed to be the same. But over long distances, level is not the same as horizontal. And here's a definition that supports that level, having no part higher than another, conforming to the curvature of the liquid parts of the Earth's surface. Now part B does say parallel with the plane of the horizon or horizontal, but this definition works on the globe Earth because at each location, what the observer will see is horizontals that are perpendicular to the vertical at that location and horizontals that are parallel to the observed plane of the horizon. So how we use the words level and horizontal really depends on the type of surveying that's done. 
On the left, plane surveying is a branch of surveying in which the surface of the Earth is considered as a plane surface, which would mean that level is also considered a plane surface. And the survey accuracy is low. But on the right, geodetic surveying is another branch of surveying in which the curvature of the Earth is considered when taking measurements on the Earth's surface. And the survey accuracy is high. Now, most construction surveys are going to be plane surveys because they just do not cover enough area where curvature is going to have an effect on the project. But all one needs to do is Google horizontal and level lines, then click images. And it's quite interesting that all the surveying and civil engineering websites show a level line as a curved surface. Now, yes, this one here is about leveling. And in the diagram above, they are showing differential leveling. And when you do this with balanced back sites and foresights, you can get very accurate elevations. But they also agree that a level surface is defined as a curved surface and a horizontal plane through a point is a plane tangential to the level surface at that point. It is therefore perpendicular to the plumb line through the point. Old surveying manuals say the same thing. Here's one from 1903 saying that a level surface is slightly curved owing to the spheroidal shape of the Earth. This one from 1908 shows sea level as a curved surface. You can find the same thing on YouTube when it relates to surveying. These are a series of videos from Dave Doyle, who was the chief geodetic surveyor from the NGS. So let's go back to the graphic I showed at the beginning of this video. And in the model above, the horizontal elevation does not change with distance. But down below, the horizontal elevation does change with distance. And this is at about a rate of 8 inches per mile squared. And of course, this is what we see in reality. Here's two observations made by a surveyor named Jesse Kozlowski. On the left, he had his auto level set up at 256 feet, but you can see that it is targeting the Comcast building at a much higher elevation. That building is 1,010 feet tall. The same is true on the right, where his auto level is at 160 feet, but it is targeting the Empire State Building at a much higher elevation. And this is something that anybody can do. This is from Bev, who has a YouTube channel called Try Thinking. He had an auto level and he set it up on a beach at about 1.235 meters above that beach. And you can see in the distance, he targeted Blackpool Tower at about an elevation which is 30 meters higher. Now, Bev and some others have made the claim that you can't use an auto level to measure long distances, which is kind of strange because an auto level is a leveling instrument that is used to establish or verify points in the same horizontal plane. So there can't be a distant limit for an auto level's horizontal reference plane since planes extend forever in Euclidean geometry. So yes, I stand by my claim at the beginning of this video. Is level the same as horizontal? Yes and no, depending on the context in which we are using the words. Is this a contradiction? No, because in plane surveying, we are only assuming that level and horizontal are the same. We aren't saying they are the same, because as I showed, in most cases, we can't even see or measure the difference between the two. But in geodetic surveying, a level surface is regarded as a curved surface, and it is not the same as a horizontal plane. 